two race across the world continued last night. It has been an absolute roller coaster of emotions for Jeff Brazier and his 19 year old son, Freddie. Uh, filming for the series fell on Mother's Day, uh, which brought up all kinds of feelings for Freddie. My mum was Jade Goody. I guess some people know her as the Big Brother star. I lost my mum when I was four. I don't really remember being held. Yeah, I don't really remember being held by my mum. Um, if I had more memories with her, it would have made it a whole lot harder for me. Um, but I think I would have rathered that than not really remember the things that I had done with my mum. Oh, God, Linda, oh, that's raw, isn't that it? It really is, yeah. So I did a loose swimming competition in Florida with Jeff and the two boys, and Jeff's mum was there looking after him. He was amazing with them two boys, honestly. He'd done a really good job mm. bringing them up. And the mum, his mum as well, was looking after him. It was amazing. But they had a really traumatic childhood, didn't they? Mm. I mean, they lost their mum at a really young age, and then Jeff lost his dad at a really young age. So they've all had traumatic childhoods, really. Mm. They've had to live without their parents, haven't they, growing mm. up and that? I mean, unless um, you've had that experience, you're just not going to realise. No, you can't you? comprehend it, no, can you? Can't. I mean, our very own no. Brenda lost her parents didn't, yep. didn't, when she was young age, only seven. Four, 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 yeah, four, yeah. Four. Mm -hmm. And I think as mums as well, watching it and just those words, I don't remember my mum's arms around me. And I think that just gets us, gets us all, doesn't it, so deeply, yeah. that thought. Oh, it's just so well, painful. And there is so much stuff out there about Jade Goody. Yeah. And, and, and good yeah. and bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and Jude came on the, the program several I loved times her. back. Yeah, I did. Oh, I absolutely. Loved her. Thought I, she was and she me. had yeah. such a, a quality to her. Mm. Uh, but you're right. There was a lot of controversial stuff up there. And for yeah. a young, well, both boys, to see their mum through the media's eyes mm. is so different from I mean, what you feel. Yeah, as a child. it's interesting that he says, "I don't know whether it would have been better or worse yeah. to have to have remembered," but he chose to think that it would have. And obviously, unlike other people who've lost their parents, you know, that they don't remember. He has, you know, all the shows and the, vid mm. and the video evidence. I, I think it depends, like you said, there was other traumas in those kids' lives. I have a friend, well, an acquaintance, um, who has talked to me often about the fact that she never knew her mum who had died when she was very, very young. But she said she, of course, she, reflecting on it, she would have loved to have known her mum, but she doesn't feel she lost out because of the people she was surrounded with. So her dad remarried, her stepmom was and is a wonderful person. And so she said she was brought up in a completely loving environment. So she never she never misses the hugs and, and, and but obviously she doesn't have And I the think that must be well. really difficult because we, we have to be careful not to project your own feelings yeah. to say, you know, as a look at it from a mum's point of view. Yeah. That must have been so tough. Because I suppose in all, in another way, you could almost leave that person feeling guilty that they don't have those same yeah. feelings because they didn't know the person. Yeah. Every, that is the absolute when when there has been a loss Never judge. There is no right way or wrong way no. to yeah. be around grief, and yeah. and I think that that can really harm when people say, "Oh, why didn't? Oh, you must." Yeah. No, let people grieve in whatever way they they and, do. And for, yeah. yeah. And for Jeff as well. I mean, you mentioned Linda that that his mum was really good with the mm. boys, but I mean, she was fifteen when she had Jeff. He had a lot of responsibilities when he was a young boy, and also what you see in the programme, we're going to play a little clip in a second. I think the challenges that Jeff faced as a very young person mm. has also influenced perhaps his expectations of Freddie. I mean, he spoke, but he speaks very honestly about it. Here's a little clip. My experiences in childhood have probably really lent into how I parented Bobby and Freddie. I didn't ever have the company of my biological dad. He, he died when I was nine. I always obviously regretted never meeting him. So when it came to me being a dad, I was always going to make sure that they had the experience of me that I would have liked to have had from him. Bobby Garda. When I struggle with Freddie not taking responsibility sometimes, I, I struggle with that because I had no choice uh, at a very young age. Uh, but it's... Mm. They've got a lot so, to deal with, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. It's funny, isn't it? It's like, you know, Mark just craved having a father so much. He would... Every, he said <clears throat> every single day he came out of school, he would have this hope that there would be a man there that was his dad. And then because of that... Sorry. 
Uh, so, sorry. <laughs> because of that, he, he literally, he said he wrote a story in his head of what his father would be like. And then he was so desperate to have children and to be this father. And I have watched him, like, when I first met him, I, I was in that place, well, I'll never marry anyone that's already got children. But then when I saw that commitment, and I think this often happens with people that don't have a parent, they want to be so perfect. And he will say, sometimes I've really messed up with that. There's no such thing as perfect, is there? But to watch him parent and to see the sort of dad he is, with my girls when he had such a difficult childhood, no dad. And I think we need to think more about these dads that try their hardest anyway. You know? mm. um, and I just, it's interesting because you see that and for him to question himself, I mean, for, for, for him to question himself like that is so much part of being a good dad. He's saying, what, where do I go wrong? I'm try again and I'm gonna try this and try that. And I find it, it makes me love him more every day by the mm. way he does that in spite of everything. And it's nothing no, it similar makes, for you, it, make, isn't it, it makes me it makes me uh, very emotional because <clears throat> because Lincoln, <laughs> um, who is a wonderful husband and a wonderful dad to Lewis and a wonderful stepdad to uh, to my children, particularly Louis, because he was only ten mm. <clears throat> when uh, Lincoln came into my life. But Lincoln was only fourteen when um, his mum had taken mum and dad had taken him on a caravan holiday to Kent, and um, he went out running with his dad and turned around and his dad had just dropped down dead. He was 42 years old. And um, they had no idea that he had been poorly... Huge you shock, know, a, Just a huge shock. And his mum was very stoic. They didn't have any money. She just had to grab the kids. Her mum came down, they, they went back, and Lincoln had to leave school at 15. I think he was quite pleased, to be fair. <laughs> I think the school were quite pleased also. <laughs> And, um, and he, you know, he was doing three jobs by the, the time he was 15, mm -hmm. riding 12 miles a day, you know, working in a, an, in, in, in a pub as a young'un and then all that putting the holes in donuts and all these yeah. type of things that he reminds Louis of all the time. You know, Louis, <laughs> Louis goes, I've got a dad and a stepdad who do the, oh, not the tin bath story again, you know, all of this. <laughs> but it does absolutely influence your parenting. And I think yeah. that when Lincoln came into my life, a stepdad, like you say, is, it, it's, a, it's a very, very hard role to fill. And there were times when I thought he was being too strict, and I know that Louis did, but Louis now is a 23-year-old man, thanks Lincoln for those boundaries Aww. that were put in mm. because Lincoln, you know, had, had had these experiences and he had to, to get on and he was trying to be that dad. And now seeing him with Theo, our grandson, is just wonderful because he had Louis at 19 and it was just about survival. That's so you know? incredible, isn't and it? And he's an incredible yeah. grand, you know. I mean, I'm now having to say, these toys are for seven and up. He's like <laughs> one. You know? <laughs> so there's going to have to be some boundaries put in there. Aww. But yeah. But Aww. well, not to play devil's advocate, but just as another sort of angle, do we also have to be careful though not to impose our own experience mm -hmm. on our children? Yeah. Because Definitely. I mean, it's tempting, and I find myself doing it all yeah. the time. You know, well, when I was that age, I did this, and I felt like this, and I felt like that. Yeah. You also have to give them the space to have their own experience of life because they're not you. You are not doing it all no. over again they're doing it for the first time. Yeah. And it's, you know, being there enough without sort of trying to, to really run your race. There's yeah. a wonderful quote from a writer philosopher, Khalil Gibran, many, many people might know, and it says, our children come through us, not to us. And I always try and think of that. They haven't come to me, for me, forever, for me to fix. They're passing through, so... And I think it's really easy to get stuck into fixing everything that yeah. was wrong with you, know. wasn't it? Trying yeah. to it's stop so hard. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What about you? I had a really nice childhood. I had a really lovely mum that looked after me and my two sisters. Um, my dad was never around a lot, really. So any holidays that we had, he'd take us to the caravan, drop us there on a Friday, go home, probably meet one of his girlfriends, oh, and then come back and pick us up the following weekend. Although the, I love So you were there dad, a yeah. week? Yeah, yeah, we'd be there a week, but he'd never stay for the week But or it's anything. funny, cos some people there, might think... Go home and then pick us up Some again. people might think that was a dysfunctional childhood, but you actually remember it as a happy childhood I do, because yeah, of your I mom. had a really good relationship with my dad. My mum had no, like, she had no sense of humour whatsoever. I've got a really she good She was too busy humor. getting on with I things. It's interesting you chose a man who was help. a really good father. Yeah. So maybe that's how it impacted on you, your dad, like, not but being But then you thought your dad was a good father. I, well, I did, cos, I mean, I loved him, obviously. He was my dad and that. And, um, but, but, and in those days, men never really went to our school plays or anything like that, did yeah. they? It was always the mum different that times. went to everything. Yeah. Just different times then. Yeah. He'd finish work and go in the pub. 
You know, like my mum would have the dinner ready when mm. he got home and that, that's what it was like in those days. I do yeah. think there's lots of women in that generation though, that people thought, well, they didn't have a sense of humour. It's because they were too stressed out. <laughs> so too and they, because they were they trying to do too many machine. things. <laughs> they, and, could, they weren't going down the pub. And their husband <laughs> down the pub, you know, I mean, like, you lose yeah. your sense of humour when that happens, yeah. I suppose. Um,